Hey there, weavers, welcome back. So I'm here under my loom, and in two previous videos, I tied up my Bergman countermarch loom two different ways because I wanted to test out uh, the two ways and figure out which worked best. The first way was using Texolf cord and uh, a method that I had found on YouTube. Um, and it works fine, but it creates uh, a lot of loops that get tend to get caught up. So the other way was the original uh, tie-up method that came with the loom instructions. And since this is a 1950s loom, there was no Texolve cord back then. And it used uh, linen cord. And I've decided that I don't like either uh, method. So I'm going with the third method. Uh, this is a method that I found in the book uh, Tying Up the Countermarch Loom, and it uses Texol cord, but uh, in a different way. So I thought since I am putting a new warp on my loom and tying up a new pattern, uh, I would go ahead and demonstrate that method of tying it up and show you so that you can decide if you like it. It is a little crowded under here and hopefully you can see the uh, lambs well enough to follow along with the way I am doing this. So the pattern that I'm tying up is uh, I am lifting shafts one, four, five, and eight. So the lower lambs lift the shafts. So I am going to add these Texolve cords that I have made up. And um, I'll actually show you how I did that. I can spin this around a little bit again. So, I have a spool of Texol cord here. This is my sample length for the lower lambs. So, I just measure off how much I need. And then with Texol cord, you should cut it where, so here's the loop in the Texolve cord. And you should cut the, it across the loop. Now I take and I hold those two together and I've got a candle here that I've set up and I'm going to melt the ends um, of those cut edges because Texol cord is a plastic and it's braided and if you don't melt the ends it will unravel. So you carefully hold it over a candle or a flame of some sort so if you get it down in the flame, um, it will catch on fire. So be careful. Also be very careful because this is very hot. Um, I like to kind of pinch it after it's cooled a minute and make sure that it's a nice hard plasticky edge. Make sure it doesn't have any um, nodules sticking out. So there is a new length. When I use that, I am going to I'm going to go through this loop right here. And some instructions say to not use the end loop, 
but I found that um, I am able to melt this sufficiently that it does not um, come undone. If you feel the need to play it safe and go back uh, one more loop, that's totally fine. Uh, you'll just have that tail sticking out. So once I have all of my Texolve cord um, cut to length, I'm going to thread it onto my lambs. So the short ones go on the lower lambs. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the lamb. I'm going to feed one end through that loop in the Texolve cord and snug it up. Then I'm going to take the free end of the Texolve cord and put it down through the hole in the lamb. And hopefully I can just stuff it through there. And sometimes it needs a little encouragement. There we go. All right, I think I got it. Yeah, yay. All right, so you go down through the middle and then pull it tight. Now, this Texolve cord will stay in place throughout the life of the uh, loom. Um, eventually, I will go ahead and add additional Texolve cord to these other um, lambs, the other treadle holes on that lamb. But at this point, I don't feel like it. <laughs> Although I probably will because um, I'm waiting for some yarn to uh, start this project. I didn't realize that I didn't have a particular color, so um, it's going to arrive tomorrow. So I'll probably go ahead and, and do that unless my husband finds a chore for me to do. So we will do one more on the lower lambs. And if you can't, now see this one, well, that one, that one's a little small, so I'm going to back up to this previous hole. The, so those are the lower lambs. The upper lambs, the cords are, um, these are cords that I had already cut and fused the ends for the other tie-up method. They're a little longer than I need, but I'm just going to go ahead and use them um, since I already have them. Um, so these will go on the upper lambs up here. And you do the same thing, but I'm going to be tying these to the uh, treadle holes that have the shafts that rise. So 
on a counter march loom um, the when you push down on a lamb or I'm sorry when you push down on a treadle the lambs that are attached to the uh, the lower lambs that are attached to the shafts will make that shaft lower then you also tie uh, the shafts that you want to rise to the upper lambs. So every shaft is tied to ev to each treadle. Now, these are a little bit trickier. So I'm going to use my Hacksolve cord threader. Let's see if I can find the hole. There it is. And that will just make it a little bit easier. Now on the upper lambs, when you come down, you want to be sure to go behind the lower lamb that corresponds with the upper lamb. So I put this on lamb number two so I'm going to go behind lamb number two on the bottom my threader up through put the cord through and pull it down pull it all the way through cinch it up and it goes behind the lower lamb that it corresponds to to do six and seven. And the last one. I try to be consistent in how I um, how I thread these and how I wrap them around the lamb just because I like to be consistent. <laughs> I'm an accountant by, by trade, so um, I like to be consistent. All right, so that is it. Uh, I've got one more treadle to do, and then um, I'll probably go ahead and put the others in, even though uh, they just hang. And the other part of this and let's see if I can get you down here so that you can see the treadles. Because this particular loom uses 
two lamb cords for each hole in the treadle. These two cords uh, will go through and be tightened up. So you'll get the treadle to the correct height and make sure that the cords for so this is using uh, shaft seven and eight goes through and this is a 12 shaft loom so I have six treadle holes so this needs to go through the fourth hole in the treadle. So you get it to the height that you want. And then underneath, you're going to take, I use arrow pegs, and find the hole in the cord that corresponds to where your finger was. Put the arrow peg through and then let it rest. So that arrow peg is going to stay underneath your, your treadle. And that's how it's secured. So I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure to leave a comment and I will respond to them. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing to my channel so that you get notification when I post future videos. Thanks and happy weaving.